Welcome to Was It Something I Said, the panel show about quotations from famous last words to famous first words and everything in between. As celebrity ceramicist Grayson Perry once said, I don't plan what I do completely. I just go for it. I just start and hope it will work. Which explains why he only lasted a week in his first job as a plastic surgeon. <laughs> On Mickey Flanagan's team is comedian and actress Sally Phillips, and with Richard Iowadi is comedian Reginald D. Hunter. And here to read out our quotations is a journalist, broadcaster and keen walker who once said, In Barcelona, I like walking down the Ramblas because I was there when terrorists had kidnapped some people in a hotel. <laughs> I'm sure the hostages have much the same nostalgic glow in their hearts when they go back there too. Please welcome John Sargent. <laughs> um, thank you very much for coming, John. Well, it's wonderful to be here, of course um, it is. So, John, do you have a favourite quotation? I have a bit of advice from a Chinese sage, which is very simple, rather macabre. If you wait by the river long enough, the bodies of all your enemies will float by. <laughs> Extremely useful in the BBC, I'll tell it works. <laughs> but that won't... I mean, I don't want to, you know, mock Chinese culture, but that won't necessarily happen. <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is it worked for me. <laughs> right, let's crack on with the show. Our first round is called threesomes. Some cultures consider the number three brings bad luck, especially when preceded by the words Home Alone and Police Academy. <laughs> I'm going to give both teams a series of quotes and they have to work out which of three famous people said them. You can also play along at home by following at something I said on Twitter to unlock extra clips. This week's theme for threesomes is travel... And can we have the first quotation, please, John? Over the last 15 months, we've travelled to every corner of the United States. I've now been in 57 states. I think one left to go. Why no laughs there? What was wrong with that? I thought it was quite funny. They think they're, they don't know how many states there are. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'd go down better in America, I think, that joke. Yeah. I feel the same way, but if I said it, it would seem like I was being shishi poo poo about my country. <laughs> you mustn't be shishi poo poo. I won't allow it. <laughs> well, in a moment, I'll give you three famous faces to choose from, but before that, what do you make of this quotation? Are there fewer states than this, it seems? There was when I left. Oh. <laughs> um, I can tell you there are, of course, only 50 states in America. That could be the statement of someone who has a sense of humour, or it's the statement of someone who's very dumb. Yeah. That's my snap read. Yeah, yeah. Would you agree with that analysis? Sounds like someone on the run. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's a lot of legwork, isn't it? I, just, I prefer just to go to Spain, really. <laughs> I've tried over places. They're so, so, they're so like Spain, you think I should have just gone to Spain. <laughs> So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to narrow down your options. This quotation, was it said by singer Britney Spears, Republican hockey mom Sarah Palin, or President Barack Obama? All right, all right, what was that supposed to do? <laughs> I can't look yes, at Yes, this Britney is the impressions that. round. <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate Obama from saying it, because in America, he gets in trouble even when he says stuff that makes sense. So I know <laughs> What is it about women with a gun? You just think, four. <laughs> she does look sexy, though, Dave. You've got to admit, she does look sexy with that gun. I don't think she looks... I think she looks a bit stupid with that gun. <laughs> I would say she looks drunk. And she's slightly cross-eyed. Cross-eyed with a gun. That's Marion material. <laughs> <laughs> That's a keeper. <laughs> she said, I'm like a bull terrier with a lip speck. Something like that. <laughs> A ball carrier with a lack of ball terrible the lap stack. Let me just say that you have Britney Spears and Sarah Palin down. You got them down. A ball, ball a, terrier. A, a ball, ball terrier, terrier with a lap stack. With a lap stack. No lipstick. Did you say a ball terrier with an erection? She said she was a ball terrier with a lipstick, and when I heard that, I immediately saw a ball terrier with the cock out, you know. <laughs> Because it do look 
like a lipstick. Yeah, yeah. it looks like a lipstick. Yeah, that's it? Gen- it's wrong, but it's genius. <laughs> I've never seen that. Have you never so... been to a pub where afterwards they all get a dog fighting at, at the back? <laughs> <laughs> You met David. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He organises those fights, yeah. Mickey. They only go to those Ponzi pubs where they don't have dog fights. Yeah. 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 But she did say, I'm a bata of a lobster. You'll find. Well, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> so, who thinks they've been to 57 states, Britney, Palin, or Obama? I think it's Britney. You think it's. Why you, is that? Because I think Sarah Palin's not good at geography. Presumably, the whole deal with the Tea Party is that they're keen on America and stuff. Mm. So I'm guessing she'd know that there were 50 states. You but think Britney, she's... Britney, on the other hand, <laughs> I'm not so sure. He wouldn't even make a joke like that because he would be frightened how it would be picked up, and I'm sure yeah. he knows. Unless this isn't the kind of show where you just have where it's only the women say foolish things. Yes, it is that sort of show. <laughs> that is. Yeah. 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 Shut yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm that's a cup of tea, babe. <laughs> So I think Britney. OK, we're going to go with Britney. You're going with Britney. What do you think, Reg and Richard? I think your analysis that someone said it as a joke could be right. I think it could be a bomb, possibly. But I'm happy to completely defer. Well, I've never seen anyone make happiness look like that. (laughs) (laughs) The thing is, as an American, you know, there's some things that are just drilled into you. And how many states there are is just one of them. So it makes me think that it's a real, it's a joke. I think Obama is too afraid of Republicans to even make that joke publicly. Britney Spears, she know 50 states. I think it's Sarah Palin, and I think it's her attempt at a joke while being simultaneously a stupid person. <laughs> so, is that your answer? As Pete? Meatloaf said, you took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> well, the answer is Barack Obama. Oh, man. <laughs> Yes, he made the 57 states gaffe during the 2008 campaign trail in Oregon. He put it down to exhaustion and a campaign visit to the Heinz factory. (laughs) Um, Obama travels on Air Force One, which costs a whopping $100,000 an hour to operate. Mm. Um, John, you've you've flown with British prime ministers, haven't you? Is is that a luxurious affair? It can be, yeah. In the old days, I used to go with Margaret Thatcher a lot. We were very close, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, just the two um, of you in a bike plane with goggles. Just the two of us with about 100 other people. <laughs> um, she had no sense of humour, but she could be playful. It was sort of a bit odd, really. Um, um, like, I, like wrestling? Well, no, uh, no. I'll give you an example. We were uh, served a fantastic meal, and suddenly Margaret Thatcher appeared at my side. So I stood up, being the gentle I am, and all the food and crockery went onto the floor. She threw herself onto the ground, she turned to me and said, you stay where you are, I'll sort this out. So she's on the floor and there's all this hair and things, and I go, oh, God. Isn't it sort of law that at the minute a woman goes any lower than your waist, you have to say, while well, you're down there? <laughs> uh, is it possible that she got on the floor uh, to sort of humanise herself to you? It may have been all sorts of complicated reasons, but I just thought, this is blimey. There's the Prime Minister on the floor in front of me. Why is that? You know, he's trying to live an ordinary life. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> OK, John, can we have our next quotation on the subject of travel, please? I've never really wanted to go to Japan simply because I don't like eating fish. And I know that's very popular out there in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know Obama didn't say that. <laughs> I've been to Japan. It's not you, though, it's one of them. <laughs> I didn't know, don't know where I was. I get no clues in Japan as to what's going on. Nothing. All the signs, there's not one concession to the English, you know. There's nothing. <laughs> you just think, I, I should have gone to Spain. <laughs> in Spain, you get half a chance, don't you? Pharmacia. That's the pharmacy. Yeah. <laughs> Super Mercado. I can get some potatoes in there. <laughs> That's a tremendous production of the Mercado in there. <laughs> Um, I'll give you a clue. This person didn't get a passport till 2007. And, in fact, only a third of Americans have passports. Over the years, I've heard quite a few British people explain to me that only a third of Americans have passports. And when they say it, there's a tone of tisk, tisk, tisk. You better be glad. (laughs) You better be 
be glad those homegrown bellies don't come over here and start writing checks. Keep it down. Don't let nobody know. Maybe we should go to Britain. No, we shouldn't. <laughs> I can tell you that the person that said this, their hatred of fish may stem from the fact that they worked in their grandmother's restaurant as a child and said, I'd always smell of fish. I think it might be Penn, because Brittany, I don't... Or Brit, as I call her. Um, I don't think that she would have worked in a restaurant when she was young, because she was already in Mickey Mouse Club. I uh, think Palin. You think Palin? Palin. I'm going to go with Palin. Palin from Richard and Reg. What do you reckon? I think it's Brittany. I'm just obsessed with her. All right. <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> we'll go for Brittany again. Yeah. I, I love the way you're weaving that in. <laughs> um, OK, you're going for Brittany. Well, the answer is Brittany Spears. Yay! Well done. For a round called Keywords. We give our panellists keywords from a quotation and they have to try and work out the whole thing. Basically, they get a couple of words from the full sentence and have to try and guess the rest. A bit like ordering food from a menu in France. <laughs> this quotation's not well known, but I'll provide clues and I'll award points to anyone who can get the main thrust of it. It's from the father of evolution, Charles Darwin, written in The Descent of Man and Selection in Relation to Sex from 1871. As your first clue, John, can we have two keywords, please? Monkey and drunk. <laughs> Sounds like a couple of my nights out. <laughs> I did a monkey last night. I wound up drunk as anything. I By mean. did a monkey, is that expending a sum of money or yeah. copulating with an animal? <laughs> it can be both. <laughs> <laughs> so does this ring any bells, this monkey drunk thing? It doesn't ring any bells, but I wonder if he's observed drunk monkeys and that's what gave him the idea that we were related. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did uh, Darwin make up his mind to marry? He got her pregnant. Uh, no, he, he married his cousin, didn't he? He did marry his cousin, yeah, Emma Wedgwood. Yes. Um, when he was planning to get married, he wrote a list under the heading, this is the question, and split it into two sections, marry and not marry. Under marry, he put constant companion who will feel interest in one, object to be loved and played with, better than a dog anyhow. <laughs> and the minus column was not forced to visit relatives and to bend to every trifle. <laughs> By marrying a cousin, there were fewer relatives. So there were his relatives already. Wow, man, I got... That made me want to take a second look at my cousins. <laughs> well, let's have the third key word as a clue, please, John. Wiser. Oh. I think I know. You think you know? Is. He was sort of defending the idea that monkeys could learn something or that monkeys could demonstrate more wisdom in certain situations than humans. That you can give a monkey some alcohol and it, it won't repeat the experience, and people do repeat the experience. Uh, Sally and Mickey, do you want to have a go at an answer? Is it if I was any wiser or any more drunk, I'd find a few more monkeys and create a band? <laughs> Well, I think we need to hear the full quotation and see who's got closest. John. An American monkey, after getting drunk on brandy, would never touch it again, and thus is much wiser than most men. But the rest of that quote is, but a British monkey would get just as <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> Richard was almost entirely right. Hey! Um, <laughs> Yes, an American monkey, after getting drunk on brandy, would never touch it again. Monkeys are, in fact, highly intelligent. They can be taught to use tools to flick shit at each other. <laughs> so, at the end of our keywords round, I can tell you that the teams are tied. <laughs> Over the break, see if you can complete this quotation from Elton John from an interview in 1995 talking about his lifestyle. Sometimes, when I'm flying over the Alps, I think... What? Feel free to tweet your answer to at something I said, and we'll see you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Welcome back to Was It Something I Said? Before the break, we asked you to complete this quotation from Elton John. Sometimes, when I'm flying over the Alps, I think... What? I'll buy the Alps. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when I'm flying over the Alps, I think, this ain't right, I'm going to Edinburgh. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'll give you a clue. It's about drugs. The snow on it's like the same amount of cocaine I've taken. Richard's right. What? John, can we have the, the full quote, please? Sometimes when I'm flying over the Alps, I think, that's like all the cocaine I sniff. <laughs> Elton John said in an interview with Piers Morgan, this is how bleak it was. I'd stay up, I'd smoke joints, I'd drink a bottle of Johnny Walker, and then I'd stay up for three days, and then I'd go to sleep for a day and a half, and then go and do the whole thing all over again. That is how tragic my life was. And then it got even worse. He had to do an interview with Piers Morgan. <laughs> is a round called What Are They Talking About? You're going to hear a quote that has been taken completely out of context and you need to work out what that person is talking about. It's a bit like when you read out the joke from your cracker and no one understands why it's supposed to be funny and then you all realise it's a fun fact. <laughs> Here's one from techie and businessman Bill Gates writing in the Wall Street Journal in 2003. Can we hear it, please, John? It would be funny if it weren't so irritating. Life. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't let someone photograph me having my Boxing Day poo, I'll tell you. <laughs> Is it that draft excluder that you put on the edge of the door and it just it always comes away a bit at the top after a little while? And no matter how many times you push it up, it just flats down. Yep, like that's that. right, that's what he was talking about. <laughs> Uh, yes, he was talking about that sort of draft excluder. <laughs> inside the door on the top bit, he always comes away. Uh, billionaires have these problems too. Next round. Uh, no, no, it's not that. Um, uh, this is something he encounters on a daily basis, but it is arguably his fault. Is it because every time he goes onto Facebook, the entire margin is covered with lose your belly fat? <laughs> <laughs> is it about the amount of spam that you get on computers? That's what it's about. Uh, uh, can we have the full quote, please, John? I receive a ton of spam every day. Much of it offers to help me get out of debt or get rich quick. It would be funny if it weren't so irritating. <laughs> he gets four million spam emails per day and has to employ a whole department to get rid of them. John, do you know where the term spam came from? It doesn't relate to that dreadful meat we had in the 1940s, does it? Indirectly, it relates to that. Uh, it comes from the Monty Python sketch, where they, they all sing spam, 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 spam. Mm. The, the word spam is used to drown out what the people are actually trying to say to each other. Although mm. I don't think what the other characters are saying in that sketch would be worth hearing. Actually, it's the saying of spam. That's the point of the yeah, sketch. It I think it's rather perverse to watch that sketch and yes. say, I wish those Vikings would stop singing spam <laughs> so I can hear what everyone else is trying to say. Imagine being really irritated yeah. by it. I can't hear what they're saying. It'd be, it'd be like you're yeah, watching a film yeah. and you've got, you know, whatever, George Clooney and someone having a scene at the front. I want to hear what the other people in the restaurant are saying. <laughs> Our final round is the Was It Something I Said round, in which each team has to work out who said the following quotations. It'll be from someone on the show tonight, or from our virtual guest, George Osborne. The man who made it to the top, despite his origins as the son of a mere millionaire baronet. <laughs> so, first up is Mickey's team. Who said the following? Was it Richard, Reg, John, me, or George Osborne? I have two pairs of shoes. I have a brown pair of shoes and a black pair of shoes. So, who's that? That just smells of you, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> My Christmas fragrance really bombed. It was... Pedant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was actually called anal. <laughs> <laughs> they, said, they said, don't call it anal, people will think it smells of shit. <laughs> and I said, no, it will smell of specificity. <laughs> That wouldn't be George Osborne, though, because he would have... Yes! But a brown pair of shoes and a black pair of shoes and a gold pair of shoes. Well, <laughs> David Cameron didn't seem to have very many pairs of shoes. He got the piss taken out of him for sort of wearing black office shoes. On the beach? Yeah. What do you wear on holiday, Dave? <laughs> I'm on the record as a, as a naturist, so I wear <laughs> nothing at all. Have you ever done that? Have you ever done a uh, nudist beach? No, I've never been nude even in private. <laughs> yeah, I did it. So stressful. Because your penis goes. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> it just 
goes back into the pubes, it gets terrified. <laughs> and you stand there with a vagina in public. So. <laughs> Absolutely terrifying. I need an answer. I'm going to say most likely John, because I believe Richard's quite a natty dresser, knows what he's doing. Sure. Reg doesn't wear shoes. He's had bare feet for nearly 15 years now. <laughs> he's got, like, hooves. <laughs> You're saying John? Yes. Well, the answer is... John. Yeah, it's a bit embarrassing, this, isn't it? I mean, all your comments give the impression you ever said that's an idiot. <laughs> I've got a life, you know, an ordinary person. Yeah. <laughs> so, next up, Richard's team. Can we have the next quote, please, John? I have a leatherette bum bag that I purchased on a foreign holiday in the early 80s. It hung very nicely above my speedos. <laughs> so, who said that? Was it Mickey, Sally, John, me, or George Osborne? I think I know who this one is. I think the only person here with the balls to wear a speedo. <laughs> <laughs> and you mean that both literally and metaphorically. <laughs> I think it's Flanagan. Yep, me too. I know how much you like leatherette items. <laughs> I do like leatherette. <laughs> For years and years, you know, if you wanted a proper leather jacket, it was very, very expensive. And then you got a leatherette jacket, which looked like leather, but it was much cheaper, but it was a little bit shameful. You know, if I was going to have a bum bag, it would be quality. Sheep <laughs> skin. I don't know <laughs> that you would allow leather and the ocean to mix, because... That's it. getting salt out of leather is a fool's endeavour. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wise old aphorism, isn't it? <laughs> Nothing brings out a sweat like leatherette. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so your answer is Mickey Flanagan. Yeah. And the answer is Mickey Flanagan. <laughs> um, so we, do you still sport the uh, leatherette bum bag? My wife made me get rid of it. For most it's of the uh, 80s, I used to go on holiday and I used to take a pair of flip-flops, a pair of speedos, uh, a vest for the evening, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a bum bag. Yes. Job done. No trousers. <laughs> no. <laughs> and you'd buy a pair of shorts there and... You went on the plane in speedos. No, you had a pair of like, tennis shorts over the top. So why do you need to buy new shorts out there? Pair for during the day, pair for the evening. Oh, now, oh, no, now, you, now, now you're, you're sounding like, like Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. And a quick look at the scores tells me that it is a draw. <laughs> Thank you to Mickey and Sally, Richard and Reg, and to our guest narrator, John Sargent. And we leave you with the words of Daniel Day-Lewis, who once said, I have a strange relationship with time. I'm not aware of it passing. That's very much how I felt when trying to get through Lincoln. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>